Our first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to babysit my nephew, even in a family medical emergency, because my brother and sister-in-law lied before? I am my brother and sister-in-law's only relative in the city. When sister-in-law was pregnant, I made it clear that I'd only babysit for them in a case of a serious emergency, example, someone has a medical emergency. I won't babysit if they just wanted time off from being parents, because I don't have the free time for that. I work 60 to 100 hours a week, so if anyone needs time off, it's me. Last year, my brother and sister-in-law asked me to babysit on the day of an informal work meeting, a lake retreat organized by my company. Everyone is expected to go, and it's a frowned upon if you miss it. They wanted to go on a date. I said no, I have an important work event. They continued to nag me about how they haven't gone on a date for so long. The night before that day, they called in a panic and said their friend Mike from the next city over had been in a car accident and I needed to babysit nephew for a few hours so that they could go visit Mike. I reluctantly agreed, with the stipulation that they'd be back by 7am the next day to pick nephew up so I could leave for my work event. They did not come back until two days later. I had to cancel on my superior's morning off, which looked awful. My brother and sister-in-law never responded to multiple texts and calls for me. Their excuse was that Mike's life was in danger and they were too busy helping his girlfriend. I accepted that since I had met both Mike and his girlfriend at a party in the past and thought they were good people, but I emphasized that this absolutely could not happen again. Throughout the next two months, my brother and sister-in-law regularly used the excuse of aiding Mike in his recovery and needing to visit him in order to make me babysit my nephew. Mike's girlfriend's company and my company had a meeting two months after Mike's accident. I ran into her and asked her how Mike was recovering. Apparently, she had no idea he had been hospitalized. Neither did Mike. Mike had never been in an accident, and although brother and sister-in-law had gone to visit them recently, it was for drinks and bowling, not bringing them chicken noodle soup in the hospital. I confronted brother and sister-in-law, and they denied it at first, but finally admitted they had been lying about Mike's accident so that they could go on date nights. They claimed I gave them no choice since I would never help them out when they needed time together because parenting was so stressful and difficult, and I had no idea, and it was just a little white lie. I made it clear that after this incident, I would never babysit for them again. And I've stuck to that. Yesterday, my brother and sister-in-law begged me to babysit for them because there was an actual medical emergency in sister-in-law's family. They even sent me proof of the relative's hospitalization. I still said no. They didn't care about betraying my trust, so I don't care if they can't afford childcare or if their relative is in the hospital. They said I was a bad aunt, needed to get over my grudge, and a petty a-hole. Am I the a-hole? That's the main story. Now let's jump to the top comments. Not the a-hole. They cried wolf too many times. Now they get to live with the consequences. Plus, family doesn't owe family free babysitting. If they wanted a date night, find a babysitter. Not the a-hole. Didn't just cry wolf once. Kept an ongoing chorus for months. Never babysit again. Ever. I don't care if they are the ones in the hospital themselves. Anyone who wants to give you attitude about it can go babysit themselves. This Christmas, I think you should give them a nice book of children's stories. Be sure it contains The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Not the a-hole. They burned that bridge. They used a lie about the health of a friend to put their priorities above your own. They made you miss work and lied to you for months. They really expect you to do this? F that. They need to grow up, and if they weren't ready for the stress of having kids all the time, they shouldn't have had one. These people aren't just a-holes, they are bad parents. Who the hell drops their kid off to the person they've tricked into babysitting and then ghosts them for two days? This is what really gets me. Lying for months is awful, but not coming back for two days and not responding to calls or texts? I would have called the police to see if they had been an accident too, because that is the only excuse for dumping your kids and ghosting on a babysitter. Not the a-hole. Has it ever occurred to them to hire a babysitter? Your time is too valuable, and you are not responsible for their choice to procreate. They are unbelievable a-hole for lying to you. Of course not, they wanted a free babysitter. Not the a-hole. Now for the second story. Am I the a-hole for telling my mother-in-law to have her own baby when she was hassling me about motherhood? My husband and I have been married for a few months, and people have started to ask us when we're planning to have a baby. Neither my husband nor I have any interest in being parents, so we've just been shrugging it off and saying, we'll let you know. 
This past weekend, my mother-in-law told me that she wanted a real answer and not an excuse. So I finally just told her that we have no plans to have any children. She wanted to hear my reasons why not. So I told her that being a parent is too much commitment slash responsibility. It's too expensive to raise kids in the country where we live. Climate change makes me uncertain about future safety of our planet. And I don't want to put my body through pregnancy. She said that all of my reasons are selfish and that it's wrong to deprive a potential child of love just because I don't want responsibility and that it's unfair to the rest of the family that I'm stopping them from passing on their genes and continuing a legacy. I told her that if she really wants another baby in the family so badly, to get off my case about it and have one herself. I really didn't mean anything by it, other than being flipped, because she's well past childbearing age. But the comment really upset her to the point that she started crying and saying that she couldn't believe I would say something so insensitive. She refused to speak to me any further about it, but later told my husband that it was a horrible thing of me to say, well knowing that her own husband had died before they were able to have as many kids as they wanted. I didn't know this. It's not something she had ever mentioned around me. My husband said he remembered her mentioning a couple of times over the years that she wished she'd had a daughter but nothing more than that. So, I feel like she's overreacting to what was a snarky remark, but not meant to be a personal insult, and that she started it in the first place by giving me a crap about not wanting a baby. But she thinks I owe her an apology for crossing the line, and my husband agrees that what I said to her was harsher than what she said to me. Was I the a-hole here? Now let's read the top comments. Not the a-hole. You accidentally said something hurtful and hit a nerve. That is, however, because she pressured you to have a conversation about why you didn't want kids. She caused this scenario. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. I think if you feel like it, you could apologize for hurting her feelings because you weren't aware she wanted more kids, but I really think you're in the right here. It's not even that hurtful. It's true. If you want another baby in the world so badly, have one yourself. Don't force it to someone else. Not the a-hole. Pressuring people to have babies has always been weird to me, especially once they've expressed that they don't want one. Why do you want to put a child in a situation where they are potentially unloved and their needs aren't met? Not saying you'd be a bad parent, but as a child-free person, that's always been my take. Also, it's freaking weird when people start asking about babies because my brain always goes, why are you concerned about how much sex I'm having and where my partner is busting? Invasive much? Definitely not the a-hole. She shouldn't have pushed it. Not saying you'd be a bad parent, but as a child-free person, that's always been my take. I'm sure that I would be a bad parent, honestly. The very idea of having to put my life aside for a baby makes me so resentful already. Not the a-hole. She can't really blame you for her projecting her past onto your life, especially when you didn't know her past. Knowing her past now, I'd say sorry I didn't know. But there are no apologies needed for your not having a child. That's your choice. Also, what the hell is a potential child? We're just imagining people that don't exist to be harmed by lack of love? Also, what the hell is a potential child? We're just imagining people that don't exist to be harmed by lack of love? Seriously, I don't even know what to make of that remark. And now for the final story. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my husband to be the entire neighborhood's husband? I have a weird situation. It's become very clear that my husband is the only man on our street. The rest of the houses are entirely women. There's a few single mother houses, two houses of all-female roommates, one single woman, and even a lesbian couple. I normally wouldn't care or even take note of this, but since March, it's like we're getting constant calls and texts. The number we gave when we moved in two years ago, just renewed last January, was my number. I am flooded with requests for basic handyman stuff like changing light bulbs, car problems, and dealing with toilets. He has helped people around a neighborhood before because he is a nice guy and we are from a culture that assumes that men need to help out women if they can, even if they're not related. But with me being furloughed, he's the only one working and is less interested in extra stuff. But the tasks to do only take about 5 to 20 minutes on average, which I know because my husband makes me go with him because they make him uncomfortable. Even more gross than this is that these women are obsessed with him on a personal level. They openly flirt with him and literally offer themselves up if he's ever tired of me or wants something different. I have even gotten pictures of breasts from neighbors. While I love my husband and I am attracted to him, he's not like a male model or anything, so I really don't understand why these women are fawning over him like this. One of the single moms has even asked him to come over and discipline one of her children, which is an absolute no. 
He is not comfortable with any of this and has asked me to intervene. I've tried talking to these women more casually to no avail. I set up a Zoom for just us ladies to try to get us on the same page. They told me that since it's now impossible for any of them to find anyone anymore, 2020, I needed to share my husband and be less selfish in regards to household maintenance requests. It's not even safe to call for maintenance, and I shouldn't ask them to when there's a safe alternative where they don't have to risk exposure. They also said that it was just harmless flirting because they're all frustrated and can't date, and that I wouldn't even be threatened by it if I was giving him kids. I've talked to my own family about this, and while they say that the women should be less forward, I should be more understanding about how hard it is for a woman to be alone, because my own mother was alone. Am I the a-hole for not just dealing with it? Now for the top comments of this post. Not the a-hole. These grown women should learn how to complete basic home maintenance themselves. Start sending YouTube videos to them instead of your husband. Seriously, especially crap like changing a light bulb. As a woman who live alone, YouTube has been my best friend. I can do most basic maintenance around the house and all sorts of DIY. I even built my own bed from scratch. I don't expect applause for any of this, obviously. But if I can do it from reading WikiHow and watching YouTube videos, they can too. I'd hate to be so dependent on another person that I couldn't change a light bulb. As for the flirting, Jesus Christ, they can F right off. Not the a-hole, but your husband is also way, way out of line. He's not comfortable with any of this and has asked me to intervene. I've tried talking to these women more casually to no avail. I set up a Zoom for just us ladies to try to get us on the same page. How did this suddenly become your job? Why are you setting up a Zoom call for all these women? Why are you filtering their messages and answering their calls? No wonder these women don't stop doing what they're doing if it's you who tells them to stop and not your husband. He really needs to stand up for himself and say no to these women. When we originally moved in, there was a push to exchange numbers for everyone in the neighborhood at that time for emergencies. The number we gave for that is mine. Not the a-hole. You both need to start telling them no. You don't need to get them to agree that they're out of line. You just have to say, sorry, can't help. Or, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, could you show up to help? None of these things they need help with requires a penis to do. Wait, how do you change a light bulb without using your peen? But seriously, now you've put that image in my head, I have to strongly agree. Opie and her husband need to start saying no, and the jokes about her insecurities coming from them being childless need to stop. Opie, not the a-hole. And that's the end of this video. As always, hit like and subscribe and drop a comment below. I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.